so much, Christy. I was so honored to be asked to moderate this panel. I actually saw this group of young leaders present at the beginning of the school year at a conference we were all at together in Missouri. And so when I heard that I could kind of be their MC for this portion, I was really excited. So thank you for having me. Um, what I'd like to do first is have each of them introduce themselves, not only their name, but you know your grade and maybe your role with the Bring Change to Mind group or how long you've been with it, including your adult sponsors and, and team members there. And then they have a brief presentation just to kind of um, get you centered on the work that they've been doing. And then we're going to open it up really quick for questions. So I have a few prepared questions for them to answer, but then we're going to throw around that box and see if you have other questions. I heard from at least one participant earlier today that they have a Bring Change to Mind club in their local district, and they're looking to grow it and invigorate it. And so if that sounds like you, I would encourage you to use this time to kind of tap into the wisdom of this club and, and these young folks. Um, how many, just by show of hands in the room, have a Bring Change to Mind club in your school or district right now? Okay, fantastic. All right, that's exciting. It's exciting to see this really growing across the state of Indiana. So I'm going to turn it over now um, to our leaders to have you introduce yourselves, please. I'm Grace. I'm a senior at HSC, and I've been in the club since my freshman year of high school. I'm Megan. I'm a junior at HSC, and I have been in the club. This is my second year in the club. I'm also Megan, and I am a senior at HSC this year, and I've been in the club for two years now. Uh, my name's Tommy. Uh, I've, I'm a senior at HSC. Uh, I've been in the club since my freshman year, so that's four years. Um, all of us are on the board at Bring Change to Mind. We don't really like to establish roles in this board because we, we believe that we can all contribute equally. Hi, my name is Leslie Calis, and I am a Spanish teacher at the high school, and I have been a sponsor of our Bring Change to Mind club since we started um, like Tommy's freshman year. Uh, I'm Sean Crawl. I'm a business teacher in Hamilton Southeastern, and this is my first year with the club. Thank you all. Um, and Brooke Lawson is also a number, uh, another leader that works with them. We give her a pass because she's doing some self-care on vacation today, so we, um, we definitely support her in doing that, but I just wanted to acknowledge her as well um, because I know she's provided a lot of support to the club. So we'll start with your presentation so you can tell us a little bit about your club at Hamilton Southeastern. Okay, so we are Bring Change to Mind at Hamilton Southeastern, and we're all from Fishers, Indiana, and we're composed of all four grades, and we meet um, once a month, and then board members meet twice a month, and um, we are the first club of Bring Change to Mind in the state of Indiana, and yeah, please. Um, our main club mission is to end the stigma against mental health and to kind of end the discrimination in our school community against mental health and mental illness. We serve to educate peers and other teachers in our district about mental health and mental illness. And we also uh, serve to help those who struggle and offer resources to the peers at our school. So as far as that typical club meeting, since we do meet after school once a month, we always try to provide some sort of food for the kids, just some way to like relax and unwind and just to get the club meeting started. And they always want to open and introduce any upcoming events we have going on with the club or any announcements. And we try to talk about kind of an overview of what we're going to do um, and maybe when our next meeting is. And then we always try to do an icebreaker just so that our club is really involved in getting to know each other and they feel like they can open up and talk and learn. And then we always do some sort of main activity surrounding one of three areas, whether it's education, outreach, or some sort of self-care and teaching them how to care for themselves. And then we close and we just kind of reflect on what we did that day and remind them of our upcoming events and meetings once again. And so she just described our, our typical meetings, but we believe, we like to believe that we're actually more than just a club uh, with Bring Change to Mind. Uh, like a big thing we do uh, which is typically before finals week is we do like a stress-free events for the students um, this you know sometimes will involve doing yoga sometimes will involve just making crafts uh, in order to kind of calm their minds before the storm that is finals week uh, and then we also do uh, suicide prevention training I know Brooke Lawson as mentioned earlier uh, she's actually certified to train students in QPR uh, which is a form of suicide prevention uh, so that's something we, we like to have our members do. Uh, we also do public service announcements. We have a bunch of short videos that will typically go out on our high school's announcements. Um, that's really just trying to spread awareness about mental health and the club itself. 
Uh, we also do community events. I think our most popular one is called Hope for Happiness. Uh, it basically involves us getting involved with the entire community of fishers and we go to uh, downtown fishers and basically host an event that can include uh, really any activity you can think of that would involve de-stressing and spreading the word about mental health and kind of reducing that stigma, making it more of a common topic throughout the community. Uh, and finally, we like to teach students in younger grades about mental health. I mean, there's no reason we think that, that this knowledge should be limited to high schoolers and above. So we like to go to intermediate schools, junior high schools, uh, talk to their wellness classes about mental health itself, because we like to say that that's just as important as any physical health you could learn. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I actually think it's like good leadership and modeling for the adults to show what it can look like to have a very comprehensive four slide presentation. So I know for myself, I'm gonna take that one home with me and I'm gonna try to follow in your good footsteps. That was really comprehensive um, and I appreciate it. So um, the first thing I, that, you know, we have a few questions that we know of that we want these young folks and their um, adult partners to answer for us and then we're going to open it up. I think the first one that would be really beneficial for the audience to know is why are clubs like this even important? You know, there's so many things happening in the high school setting, in any school setting. There's lots of different clubs that you all could choose to participate in. For some of you, this might not be the only one that you're involved in. So both from the student's perspective, but then also from the sponsor's perspective. Why is this important? Well. You know, I like to think that mental health itself uh, is really just as important as, you know, your, be, your physical well-being, really. Um, I think your there, there are many studies that show uh, having a positive outlook towards life, having good mental health, uh, it directly correlates with having, you know, a better, better grades, doing be well on tests, you know, getting better sleep. Uh, all of that come, comes one and one together. Uh, so that's why I think having knowledge about good mental health, having knowledge about how to upkeep that, um, and do, do all of those activities to make sure that you are caring for yourself as well as caring for others around you uh, is really going to be beneficial in a school environment because all of your students are, are not only going to you know, improve their grades but also improve their outlook on life itself, um, which is why spreading the message about mental health and reducing the stigma around the topic is so important and why Bring Change to Mind itself is so important in the school setting. Okay, um, okay great. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, from the teacher's perspective, as far as why student clubs are important, and especially one like ours, I would say just to foster a sense of belonging. I think that the more clubs you can have out there, the better for students to find something to get involved in. And for me personally, as a Spanish teacher, you know, I have about 160, 170 kids a day that I get to know pretty well. But with the club, you're able to just kind of broaden the reach of students that you get to know, students that you get to influence and also learn from. So I think clubs are just really important in that regard for a sense of belonging and making a big school feel small. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, to jump in on that, I think one of the things too that's important is, you know, even us adults don't always know how to handle pressure. And there's a lot of pressure on these kids and giving them an opportunity to understand it and learn how to deal with it in a relaxed setting, I think is only been beneficial for them over time. Yeah, and I think that's a good segue too to maybe hear your thoughts on why mental health really matters so much to high school students, um, you know, in your experience right now. I think that there's so much pressure, especially me being in like my junior year. Junior years, everyone always says it's like the hardest year. <laughs> and there's so many like AP and honors classes and our school is a very competitive school, whether it's for sports or academics in general. But I think it's important to remember that we all have mental health and we're all working to strive for that good mental health and just that healthy well-being in general. But only some of us struggle with mental illness, but we just want to make sure we're spreading the word during these hard times to know that you're not alone if you're dealing with depression or anxiety or any other mental illness. Mm -hmm. any others? Um, I especially feel like students have been struggling a lot more with mental illness, especially in the recent years across the United States and in Indiana. And so it's really good that we have this club so that they're able to become more comfortable with it and to know that there's somebody that they can talk to and reach out to um, during, you know, times like Absolutely. 
Yeah, and one of the things Christy spoke to when she introduced the panel is really about how important it is for clubs like this to really take on issues of mental health stigma and kind of the culture and climate in our schools and our communities around the topic of mental health and understanding that is, like you said, everybody has mental health, right? So I'm just curious if you've seen changes in your school culture or climate in general in terms of how people are connected to each other and relate to each other, but maybe also culture around mental health, if you've kind of witnessed that during the time that you've been a part of this club? I definitely think I've noticed like a big change, even just within like my friend group. Um, and when I talk to people in the club and people outside of the club that I may meet, it's so much more open and you can talk about things that you're dealing with or, you know, if you're going to therapy that day, it's not anything to be ashamed of. It's really normalized, at least within the people that I like talk to and surround myself with. And I always want to make sure anyone that I'm coming in contact with knows that it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I, I totally agree with that. And I, I don't feel like I've only seen a change in the student population, but also with my teachers and the connections with, that I have with them. Um, I, I think I can fully say that that if I'm having a bad day or I seem off in some sort of way, then my teachers are genuinely going to come up and ask me, are you okay? Uh, you know, it, it, they're not just going to blow it off. They're not going to think, oh, he's having an off day. They're going to be genuinely concerned um, about my mental health, my mental well-being. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with, with the work we've done. Um, well, I have a million questions of my own, but I'm going to reserve them so that I can open up the questions to you all in the audience. Um, and I'm going to do my best to get this green box around. So feel free to raise your hands if you have questions. Yes. I wonder if I could throw it from up here. That'd be kind of exciting, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, harder. it's harder. Ready? Okay, so my question is in regards to social media. I have uh, two teenagers in my own house, and social media seems to be a huge stressor and causes lots of anxiety. However, if I take it away from them, that causes a huge stressor and anxiety. So how do you guys deal with that? Maybe either having it or not having it. How do you help younger students? Maybe how do you mentor them in that? I know that Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Something that I do and I try to tell other people to do, and we actually did in one of my classes that I took, is we took some time and we went through our social media and we made sure that every account that we were following, whether it was Instagram or Twitter, was something that was bringing something positive into your life. If it causes you anxiety or if it stresses you out to look at, like I unfollow the account because I want to make sure that everything I'm seeing is not hurting me, but it's helping me and inspiring me to and motivating me to do my work. Um, I think I've also found it really beneficial to kind of cleanse myself of that every now and then because, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm not addicted to social media. I think a lot of us are. Um, but I've found it really helpful to, even if I just do it for a day, maybe even a week, if I just get off Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever it may be, um, I actually really find it beneficial to kind of have that just calm, relaxing week where I don't have to worry about what's going on in the world, what's going on, you know, around my school that I, that I really just don't want to know about um, and everything like that. So a cleanse I find to be really beneficial. And personally, I feel like a big reason that social media is so um, popular within our generation is because if we're not on social media, we feel like we're almost missing out on something because all of our friends have it and so do we and if we're either like snapchatting each other texting each other if we even put our phone down for like one second we could miss something and i feel like the only way to fix that is if everyone just kind of finds something that's beneficial for them and takes time off for themselves and just realizes the benefit that it gives you um i would also say that they have done a nice job at some of our meetings of teaching some self-care strategies and coping mechanisms for stress. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they are trying to show students what you can do besides be on your phone. Mm -hmm. So that's been helpful of when they're stressed, you know, think of all the other things you could be doing instead of just scrolling mm -hmm. mindlessly. I think something that's important too, if I can jump in, is, is the club helping them understand that who they are as a person is not based on a like or a retweet. It's about who they are as a person when they look in a mirror. And I, just being with them for a short period of time, you can see that already in trying to 
promote that mentality, I think, helps a lot, too. That's great. And I think all those messages are ever more powerful when you develop them, you know, as youth to youth, right? Because you're going to have more of the answers for your generation on that than I think adults could really provide or brainstorm, right? So great. Thank you for that great question. I think there was another question behind you as well, if you feel so brave to toss it behind. Did you have a question? No, it was actually about social media. Oh. oh. Do you have a follow-up question about social media? Well, sure. Great. <laughs> okay, so my question was going to be just along the lines of, do you think, you as teenagers, do you think that social media is the cause of such a rise in you know, mental health issues? I feel like it could be because with like being able to see like daily like everything that everybody's doing you can like think that oh like they have like a better life than me like they're having more fun than me and it can just make students start to think like down about themselves and it's just getting them out of that mentality and into more positive mentality that is good to work on. So. And personally I feel like social media has definitely caused mental illness to go up but I don't think it's one of the leading causes of it. I think it's caused it to go up because we almost get ourselves trapped in like a social media bubble. So once we start scrolling, it's almost hard to stop. And then we procrastinate and we just disassociate ourselves with like actually talking to people. And I feel like that can cause like a sense of like loneliness within. And I feel like bullying is like bullying is just becomes like it can be explosive on social media. And I feel like maybe that's where. A lot of it's coming from even as I have a nine-year-old daughter and I see some of the things already so I just wondered if that was yeah well just to touch on bullying um, I know in our high school specifically I I don't know if we're lucky or if it's like this you know you know uh, world round um, country round whatever um, but I think we in terms of in terms of bullying in the high school there really isn't as much of it as you would think. I, I think the media, the movies you watch, everything kind of blows up bullying in high school like it's a common thing. Um, so I think that's more to blame uh, than, than social media would be because honestly, I know I, I really don't see it around our school at all. Um, and I don't know if they can attest to that either. I think maybe it's like changed in the way people bully yeah. each other is maybe it's like, it's not as physical or like happening in the hallways at school, but maybe on social media a little bit more. Yeah. It's just not as blatant. Great. Other questions? Yes, in the back. <laughs> nice teamwork. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me go back to my seat. Um, so I teach at a junior high, and one of the things we see a lot is that kids get called out for trying to do the right thing. Um, some of the things we've heard is like a try hard or you know a do gooder or something like that. So the question that we've got is. How do we help the kids not feel like they're getting singled out for trying to do the right thing or avoiding the drama or avoiding the negative things that happen in junior high? If you can help us at all. <laughs> I've definitely They've already blocked junior high out of their memories. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely, I, I see where you're coming from. I have a nephew actually that's in eighth grade himself. Um, and he, I think he's definitely kind of gone going on that, you know, I don't want to be a try hard. I don't want to be any of that. I think for some reason, and, and I think, you know, we were just on topic of self, social media. I think that definitely, you know, kind of spreads this, but I, I think there's some kind of culture among students nowadays that, Hey, if, if you're doing good, then it's not cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I feel like the only way to kind of combat that is, is as, as teachers, uh, to provide some positive reinforcement to the students that actually do good. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's probably the easiest way that you're going to be able to combat this, this culture that's come up now. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you just kind of have to hope that that positive reinforcement is going to inspire those kids to, to continue doing what they're doing. Um, and, and if you don't want to do positive reinforcement, you can even, even use a scare tactic. I mean, <laughs> you can say, hey, I mean, you, you keep up this work in high school. You're not, you're not going to go to college. <laughs> so I, I think you can be nice or you can speak the truth. Uh, and, and I feel like those are probably two of the best methods to be able to get these kids to, to understand what being a tryhard really means. And I feel like at that age, my little brother is an, an eighth grader as well, and so and he's a very anxious child. But I think at that age, when you when we even 
presented at a junior high and talk to them about mental health. And even in the room, all of the kids are so nervous. And I think they're all just so aware of what everyone else is doing. And so that causes them to be like lash out at other people because they're trying to defend themselves and make themselves feel better. And so I think kind of understanding like why they're doing that and that they may be struggling with something might help. As a parent of an eighth grader, I can say that's <laughs> absolutely true. Um, my son struggles with the same mental health issues that I do. And surprisingly, he deleted his Instagram on his own, which was shocking to me. But I think two things. One, I, it's important for the parents to reinforce that behavior. And I know we don't have a lot of control over that as teachers, but I think uh, there are programs involved I've seen at other schools where you know, you have referrals or you have passes uh, for, for kids who do things wrong to create the same thing for kids that do good. And then, you know, you see some kid doing, doing great, then he gets a different color pass, like, hey, you've got this, and they get in a drawing for some, some kind of prize or something to kind of really promote school-wide that that's a positive thing and we like that and we want to promote that. And you can get good things for doing good things for other people, so. We did that at my, junior, my, my junior high. We had feathers, and you got a feather if you did something right, and then we got in a raffle, actually. So, mm. <laughs> Cool. Thank you all. Other questions? Yes, up front. Oh, there's a question in the back, and then we'll bring it up front. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here today. Um, so how do you guys, what language do you use to advertise the club so that it doesn't have a stigma attached when you're trying to get people to join the club? I know recently we had an event that was for like Valentine's Day focus, but it was more like self-love. And I think we just put Valentine's Day party and just listed off that there's going to be pizza and like other candy. <laughs> like just, we kind of just make it seem like a fun event because it is really fun to get together with people and to like talk and just, you know, hang out with your peers. So. And I run the Instagram account, so I make like some of the flyers me and one other girl do. And I've learned that if you keep it short and simple, people are more likely to read it. So like going off what Grace said, she's like, we just put Valentine's party. And then we'll like make the comment something very like summed up of what we're doing. And then when we post like about our team meetings, we'll um, keep it very short and simple and just get to the point. Mm -hmm. And just make sure it's like non-controversial and it's just explaining like what we did and why we did it and what we're going to do with it and just like the basics like that. I would also say um, we try our best to make it known that we are not a support group, that it is about learning and spreading awareness, but so the activities that we are planning as far as like the language that is used in it we always have a mission as to like what we want to accomplish that day. So with the Valentine's Day, it was the self-love and self-compassion. They did they made some kindness boxes a couple months ago and it was about, you know, come and spread kindness. And then they've done um, meetings where they are learning about a specific thing. So there are some that are like more educational in the language, but others are more of come do this and it's a place for us to meet and to gather but it's not like we're just sitting and talking about a specific thing per se do you call it bring change to mind meeting yes. or yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay yeah we it'll say on there bring change to mind it has where we're meeting from 3 to 4 and and then it'll have our little club logo that is a national organization logo and then it has a little thing to just kind of pop out to j grab attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other questions? There's one up front here. Yep. Thank you. I'm putting you guys to work at the end of the day, aren't I? It's good. Keep it alive. Oh, this is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so close. But wasn't it more exciting? I'm going to need a lot of help. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So here's my question. Uh, what advice would you have to newly formed clubs in terms of getting momentum, building excitement, awareness of the club itself, maybe, you know, and, and trying to recruit, and if you have any advice. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think the, the biggest recommendation I could, I could say for a new club uh, actually has nothing to do with mental health uh, and has everything to do with the fact that high schoolers love free food. Um, 
So, I mean, that's how we got a lot of our first members. We, we you know, of course, we advertised it as a club spreading knowledge about mental health and, you know, um, tried to advertise our fun activities. But on all of our flyers, we always have something that says, oh, free pizza or something like that. And that, I mean, that is going to keep your members, it's going to get you a lot of new members because, you know, they're going to want to come eat. And then once you, if you can hook them at your first meeting with a fun activity um, and show them that, you know, learning about mental health doesn't have to be boring. Uh, then that's going to keep them coming. Um, so I think initially you should start off with something unique like free food. And I also think, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I also think it takes time. Like it change might not happen overnight, and you might only have a couple members at the first meeting. But I think just remember that it's going to grow, and you can keep doing fun events and get the word out there through flyers and social media and just talking about it to your friends. And I think we didn't. It starts off small, but once you get there, you get there. I also think it's important to try and at least if you don't get teachers to come to the meetings, keep them in the loop of when they're happening and educate them on what the club is. This year we did little goodie bags for teachers that had some supplies in them and it had a message. It was called a stress relief kit and it had like a rubber band to stretch yourself, a paper clip to keep it all together, a lifesaver for when you're struggling or need help, bubble wrap because it's fun. What else? A, Clorox a, wipes. A kiss and a hug. You can always use those. And so I think, and then we attached our, like a little thing that had why we put each thing in it. And then on the back side, it had a sticker that said brain change to mine and what our club does and what our mission is. And then I, in my specific department, I have tried at times to give them a flyer to put in their room to possibly draw students' attention to it. We also have done things where bring a friend and enter a drawing and we give a gift card or oh, like little incentives awesome. like that's that to idea. just try. And these kids are involved in so many things. And so trying to find a way to get them to yours and to bring more people. Mm -hmm. I have two questions. Um, the first one is, um, do you like fundraise to pay for your pizza or do you go to your principal and say, can we have money? Or how, how do you like, how do you fund some of those activities and snacks and things that you need financial resources for? And once she ans finished answering that, I got one more. <laughs> um. So actually, Bring Change to Mind provides us with like a stipend for uh, the year, um, which helps us pay for the, that food. Um, of course, our school has, has a, a deal with the pizza place that we get it from, um, so we get discounted food, so that's always helpful. Um, but I, I, another huge thing that we did, I think for, probably for the first two years maybe, um, is we would actually have uh, people on the board go into places um, and tell them our message, tell them what we're here for, um, and just ask for a simple donation for a meeting. Uh, we, we had countless meetings where we would have food donated directly from uh, food places around the, around the community uh, just because they, got, they were in full support of what we do. We also have had donors in the community who have found out about what we are doing through our Hope for Happiness event. Um, we have a lady in our community who does a Sunday crafter noon in Fishers and one of the months of the year she collects for us and she just recently reached out to me and wanted to know what exactly you know do you guys spend the money on and I sent her pizza 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 <laughs> but then like I put like some you know we did this and the supplies we bought that we bought that with and we've also it's been a while but we were invited to speak like we've been at a Sunday school class before and we've just gotten little bits of donation from that but then also through bring change to mind graciously giving the funding that they offer I know we're we're gonna give you a little something too from Indiana School Mental Health Initiative so hopefully for being here today so hopefully that'll help you buy some more pizza yeah that's Maybe awesome Chick -fil -A. The kids oh, are Ch hey Ch Ch hey whatever you want we've been sticking to pizza and so I have kids from like a few years ago like when are we gonna have Chick-fil-a again I'm like, it's a little more pricey oh I love that so so my next question is um, you know, around the United States, we have we have 
Suicide Prevention Month and Mental Health Awareness Month, and I like in May and September. And I was wondering if you all um, participate in any kind of activities during those months to to educate, um, and if so, what what might those be, or what might that look like? So I would so Brain Change to Mind does a week in the spring where they each day is a different theme and they encourage the clubs to participate in that um, last year we it was more of a social media presence with that um, but we do our hope for happiness fishers in may does their mental health month and so that is why we kick off the hope for happiness then um, we've also done some some of the walks with the um, suicide prevention associations and we help with a softball tournament in the community sometimes it is hard when you know the different months and the different weeks of getting our kids who are already so busy to do more um, because we have other volunteer opportunities throughout the year but I think little by little we're trying to encourage but then also constantly I think our biggest thing this year has been the students who are coming to our club meetings, they get it. They don't have the stigma, so it's finding ways, and sometimes I think through social media is good, of getting that message more mobilized to get out there to the students who aren't at our club meetings. And so those days where things are on social media for suicide prevention are, are helpful. Okay. So my question is, we heard about, you know, students as young as eight or nine years old having suicidal thoughts or actually committing suicide. So how do you tackle sensitive issues with younger students? Yeah. So like, like we talked about a little bit earlier, um, we do like to go into the, those intermediate schools. Um, I don't know if we've gone to elementary school yet, but I know we've been to the junior highs and uh, intermediate. and. We, we do, I mean, we talk to them more sensitively, I guess, than we would uh, to, to the high school population. Um, and and kind of mainly focus on not necessarily suicide, um, but, but we do like to talk about just mental health in general um, and potential mental health issues that, that they could be experiencing or that are common. Um, and, and that typically gets a good, a good result from, from those kids that are, are going through those times. I know uh, I was told, I wasn't at this specific uh, one where we talked to a junior high class about it, but, but I know I was told by one of our other board members that uh, they actually had a few people start break down crying in the class because they all had heart-to-heart -heart conversations about their mental health struggles. Um, so I think it's really just taking that first step into teaching these kids about mental health just as you would a high schooler. Um, to, to kind of break that barrier and get them to admit what's going on. And I know that um, last year, me and a couple other board members, we went to one of our intermediate schools. So it was a little bit of a younger grade, and I think that that might have been what they were talking about. But it was very like heart to heart, like in a circle, and it was heartbreaking. And a lot of them were just crying and like sharing their stories. And I know Brooke was there with us to make sure that you know she could provide any assistance and any help that she needed to. But we're just very sensitive and thinking about kind of what we're saying. But also we want to teach to the kids when we go to speak to the wellness classes and talk to the grades to make sure that if a student comes to them and one of their friends comes to them and they need help, that it's not on them to provide the help, but to just tell someone and have them help them. That way they're making sure that we're spreading the message that it's okay if a friend comes to you and you can offer your support, but also making sure it's not, they're not taking on that pressure. We also have, like many school districts in Indiana, have been starting SEL pilot programs. So not specific to just bring change to mind, but in our elementary schools, they the kids are learning about their brains and learning about their emotions and why they feel the way they feel and when they feel it. And so I would say that that has been helpful. Um, and trying to kind of change our entire district's culture as far as normalizing mental health and mental illness and well I think <clears throat> I think a big thing too is being open as adults to talk about it I think our students take a lot of cues from us as adults to talk about it and I've always been very open in, in my classroom talking about what I live with and it you'll, you'd be amazed to see 
when, when you talk about it, the kids that you could just see that it flushes and it kind of relaxes them knowing like, wait, you have this too and you're okay to talk about it to know that it's normal and it's okay. And one of the things that we're doing between SEL and bring change to mind is, um, I could, I had, I struggled this summer. I really did. And I stumbled across a, a music video from a band where the lead singer took his own life and, and it hit me. And, and that's when I kind of snapped out of it and thought, this is what we need to do as adults is tell kids that we care. Mm -hmm. And so we're creating a video. We're taking the teachers in our, in our school and our administration and students and recreating this video with the lyrics to tell all the student body. Because if you just go on the announcements and just say, hey, we care, will they listen? But I think if you hit them where they're at, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So we're creating this lyric music video um, to let them know that we care, that their light is important and it needs to shine. So mm -hmm. we're trying what we can, but I think it's important that we as adults really model that for them to know that it's okay to discuss those issues. Mm -hmm. I, th I think too that our students have made it a point that they feel like a lot of the stigma is with the parents. And so when we talk about our hope for happiness or we talk about the different outreach in the community, they talk about we need to make sure that the parents hear the message and that will then trickle down and that will normalize the help that they can get their student. I would just reiterate that I've heard that from, from educators, mental health professionals, adults, and kids, that sometimes there's this sense that the mental health stigma is often with those of us adults in the room and those adults, you know, in, in generations be behind us, and that, you know, among our younger generations, this stigma is hopefully, I'm really hopeful, that it's starting to fizzle out. And I think the fact that you've had conversations where even kids younger than you, who maybe that was the first time that they ever met you, are opening up about things that they're going through, that's an indicator that you created a really safe place for them to share something difficult. And I think that's just a really positive outcome. And also all the ways that you're trying to reach out and show people you care. You know, we heard from Dr. Pickens yesterday morning when he spoke about the importance of a sense of psychological or emotional safety. And it sounds like all of the different activities and things you're doing and outreach is helping create that. So it, it kind of gives space to and permission for a little bit of vulnerability and, and sharing and connection. Um, other questions for this fabulous team? Okay, how can folks contact you and may they contact you to follow up if they have other burning questions? Yes. Oh look, all the, so you need to get on social media and if you are not yet, and if you want to connect with these fabulous um, young people and their sponsors, I encourage you to follow them on social media. Um, any closing comments or questions from the audience? Yes, Christy. Could you uh, talk about this uh, wonderful person? Yes, she is our Indiana oh. liaison for Bring Change to Mind. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to come up? Stand up. Stand up. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them what's happening on Saturday? Sure. That'd be great. Do it. Sure. Okay. All right. I'll just take this off. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Emily. I'm the regional program manager for Bring Change to Mind, and we are actually gathering all of our schools. We're up to about 30 schools right now looking to um, project about 55 by the fall across the state. So that's really exciting. <laughs> Um, but this Saturday at IAPUI, we're gathering about 80 students across the state to come um, for our first leadership summit. So they're going to be almost, it's almost like a huge bring change to my meeting where kids will be able to do some activities together, have some mental health discussions, but also learn what other clubs are doing across the state and take those, what they learn back to their um, clubs as well and just have the time to connect with other students as well. So we're super excited. It's our biggest summit that we've ever had in Indiana. It's our first one. We were expecting 30 to 50 kids and we have 80 coming. So we're so very excited. If you're interested in starting a club at your school, feel free to reach out to me. I'll stick around. I have my contact information with you and I so appreciate you guys coming and sharing and pioneering the way for Bring Change to Mind all that you guys are doing. So thank you. Thank you.
Um, so I guess just in closing, I, you know, I, do you have another comment you'd like to make? Go ahead. We, they want to take a selfie with the crowd. Yeah, they want to take a selfie with the crowd. Oh, so yes! if you guys want to stand out here, I'll take it. How are we going to organize that? Tell me.